Welcome to Conquering Dreams with the legendary motivational speaker, C.B. Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here's C.B. Baker. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Conquering Dreams. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Um, wow, we've had a great season so far. And we've had, we talked about mentor, mentorship. We've also talked about getting your fi- finances in order. Now let's talk about what a lot of people come to me with, which is, hey, CB, I want to start a business or I want to do X, Y, and Z, but I just don't know where to start. And this is very easy to do. Um, but you know how they say what is easy to do is also easy not to do. One of the easiest things to do in this, um, when, when you're trying to, or you wanting to do something different with your life, or you got a dream that you're wanting to get accomplished or a goal you want to get accomplished is getting lost in that first step, having, um, information overload. How many people out there have, how many times out there have you seen People have information overload. Like they say, okay, I got to find out about X, Y, and Z before I do it. I want to make sure that I know everything before I do it. It's good to be informative and get the information, but don't let that cause um, you to be paralyzed in the process of you not being able to make that first step. What if and everything to death? Have you, have you, if anybody out there has been in marketing or, or did anything like that, I hate it when we've got to do a newsletter or brochure because everybody has a opinion. Then you have your English majors out there that want to wordsmith everything to death. And it's something that could easily take about a week to do turns into a month. And granted, I know there's a lot of people out there that's going to be talking about branding and making sure everything that the message is getting across, making making sure all the pictures match up. And it, it just just gets everything nice and neat. But hey, if you spend six months working on, quote unquote, your branding for a newsletter or brochure, did six months go by without you being able to get any sales, without you being able to put your name out there to generate revenue? Now, look, people, the name of the game when you're trying to do a business and start a business is making money, period. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that's going to be talking about, well, you want to do what you love and what you're passionate about. You do not go into business, okay, business, because that's what you love to do. If you want to do something and you love to do it, then create a hobby, Okay, because one thing that's going to happen when you make something that you love to do and you turn it into a business, you got to make sure that you really, truly love doing that thing. Because when you turn it into a business, then things start to change a little bit. It's because you're now putting a monetary value on your time that you're spending on that particular thing or doing that particular hobby. OK, if you've watched Shark Tank at all, you have heard people or Kevin O'Leary say, you know, this is not a business. This is a hobby. And then trying to figure out what is the difference if some people have spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars on something on a product that they just very passionate about, but they're not really making any money doing it. And then. You know, you have a, a VC say this is not a business. This is a hobby. It's kind of disheartening. Because you've poured all this money and time and energy into it. So when you're trying to start a business, you need to make sure that what you're passionate about, that you want to turn into a business, that you are sure that you want to turn that into a business. And then also, is it a business? Really think about that. Is it a business? Is Are you providing a value to someone or organization that they're willing to pay for it. And then if they're willing to pay for it, is it something that they are willing to pay um, a monetary value that is worth your while? Case in point, if you like dogs, right? And you got a couple, let's say you got like two or three hours of free on your hands on a 
Saturday morning, but it's like it's three Saturday mornings out of the month, right? That you got free time. So you go around, you say, I got free time in the morning. I'm going to go around and I'm going to market myself for walking dogs on Saturday mornings. Very niche business. And let's say it takes off, you know, not take, take off, but you're able to get a little bit of uh, extra spending money in it. Right. But now here comes the holidays where Christmas parties are going on or, or events are going on out of town. But wait a minute. You can't go to it. Because you have signed people up to walk their dogs on Saturday morning. So you can't no longer go out of town. You know, because they're paying you money. So what happens if you say, well, I'm, you know, it's a hobby and I'm not, you know, I make a little bit of money. You call those people up that signed up for you. They don't look at you as CB Baker that's coming to walk my dog and I'm paying them you know, $5 to walk my dog or $10 to walk my dog. They see a business and they start talking. It's like, well, that was just so unprofessional to call me the week before. They're not going to be able to come walk my dog and get this and get them to have some exercise. Now, I made this very simple, but you get the point that I'm making. You got to make sure that what you want to do as a that you like doing as a hobby, that you want to turn it into a business. Because once it gets going in the early stages, yes, it very it helps a lot, especially to get through that dip that Seth Godin talks about. If you have not read the book, read the book. The dip is a very good book to help you manage whether or not you should quit and starting something new or a new venture or whether you should just go through and power through the dip. OK, I'm not going to get too technical in what it's about and everything, but just understand that there is a dip. And what they talk about basically is when you start something new, it starts out great. Everybody's got all this energy. And then all of a sudden, after a while, after you get punched in the face, as Mike Tyson say, then things start getting hard. What powers you through that dip, that dip there is your passion for what you're doing. That's what powers you through that. But then, like I always say, what I always tell people is like, okay, you're passionate about doing it, but is it something that you really want to do for business? Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that hate their jobs. But they love what they do. Let me, let me say it again. There's a lot of people out there that hate their jobs, but love what they do. What I mean by they hate their jobs is they hate the fact that they've got to show up at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday and work on this thing to 5 p.m. They absolutely hate it's the having to do this. And then when you have when you want to. um Go on vacation. I got to put on vacation uh, time off request. When I get sick, I got to call in. That's the part that they hate. Now, some people out there do hate that their job and what they are doing. Right. But I, and I tell people all the time, if you hate what you're doing, you need to go find something else that you don't hate. It doesn't make any sense to continue to do something that you hate doing. But you, there is a difference between hating the job and the, and hating what you do. Okay. Because there's plenty of people out there that, that go into business for themselves to say, I love what I do. I just don't like that nine to five type feel. Like I want to be able to, I'm a night owl. So if I work to one, two o'clock in the morning, I want to be able to sleep into like 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, then, then get up and go to work. You know, there's plenty of people out there that's like that, you know, so you got to find something that fits you. You know, that's the the um, the big ordeal in that you got to find something that fits you. So. Now. When you are looking at your dream and, and what you try to accomplish. We got to always start with the first step, right? So you got to ask yourself this question. What is it that I can do right now? Right now. 
that can get me closer to accomplishing my dream than anything else I can do at the moment. Now, most people, when they try to do something, they're going to conquer, the, they're going to go conquer the dream or reach their goal or try to get their goal. They just do the first thing that pops up in their head, which is usually the first thing that pops in your head is the most easiest thing to do. And they'll sit down and say, OK, let's map out a to go list or uh, not a goal list to do list. Right. But now if you do that, what is what did, did you accomplish? You know, you got it on paper and you're looking at it now. Let's say you did do that. Now, what's one of the what's the one thing on that list that gets you the farthest along? Most times you're not going you're gonna have a bunch of little C list items. And what I what I mean by C list items, you got A list items, B list items, and C list items. That comes from Stephen Covey and, and the, the priority uh, matrix, right? A list, B list, and C list, right? C list is your little daily task that you could do um that don't necessarily move you towards the, your goal, so to speak. But your A list items, those are your like Cream de la cream. It's like, what is it that I can do right now? Not today, right now. And when you figure that out and you get that accomplished, you have propelled yourself so much farther along in your quest to conquer your dream than anything else that you would do. And I'm going to tell you something. Most people don't do this. And that's the reason why they fail at conquering their dream or they give up or they can't power through the dip. Okay. So first things first, whether you're trying to lose weight, open a business, go in, trying to get a promotion at your job or trying to switch jobs or just trying to do something different. What is the one thing that you can do right now to propel it forward? One guy, um, I forget his name, but he was saying winning the day. Right. He would say, if you win the day. Consistently win the day, you will most likely be successful. He is absolutely right. And I, and I can for the life of me, I can't think of his name right now. But if you win the day, you will. Win the week, you will win the month, you win the quarter. And you win the year, but it starts today. Right. So if you're listening to my voice and you haven't um, mapped out what you're going to do for today. Make that happen as soon as possible. Later on tonight, I want you to sit down, I want you to write down everything out and to say, what is it that I could do tomorrow? out of this list of things I've written down that can propel me to conquer my dream the furthest. And to the point to where everything else really doesn't matter. That's on that list. Right? Like if you're trying to lose weight and you got to go to the uh, grocery store and you're going to the grocery store and you're trying to lose weight and you say, what can I get at the grocery store that's going to help me lose the most weight? And, you know, most nutritionists or or uh, personal trainers will say, go with the leafy greens, you know, um, stay with vegetables, stuff, superfoods, you know, all right, so you got to get superfoods, though, what is a superfood? So then you got to go look up what a superfood is. So then another person will say, well, keep on drilling on down. You got to meal prep it out, find out what a superfood is. So all this stuff is going to happen before you even get in your car to go to the supermarket to get the groceries. But going back to my first statement, don't get information overload because you could go down this whole rabbit hole of the internet and never come back out. And then it's at night and be like, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. Do it. Doing it tomorrow has killed more dreams than anything else. You know, people always talk about all you know, my parents, people's parents, the upbringing, the environment. No, doing it. I'll do it tomorrow. Quote unquote has killed more th- dreams and more aspirations than anything else in the world. I'm, I am. I am. I. I'm a victim of of doing that to myself. You know, I have started on workout quest and I said, well, you know, it's um, I miss my Monday workout. I do it tomorrow. 
tomorrow comes and oh man, it's Tuesday. Well, now now it's Wednesday. Uh, I might as well just wait till next week. Then it turns till so tomorrow turns into next week. And guess what happens the next week? I don't do anything. Right? So I'll do it tomorrow. Like I said, it has killed more dreams than you can ever imagine. So look at yourself. Has I, I will do it tomorrow. Has that killed any of your, any of your dreams? Really look deep into yourself. Think about it. Be truthful with yourself. And then you'll realize, you know what? You're right. CB, you're right. I have done this to me. And this is what I want to let everybody understand, get everybody to understand something. When you tell yourself that you're going to do something and you don't do it, what do you think happens to your self-esteem? Have you heard somebody say uh, to you, like, you know, I don't trust myself in that situation? That is what happens. You stop trusting yourself. Just like that little boy you see on TV, daddy, you're coming to my, my Christmas play. And the, you know, how the Christmas movie go, the dad says, yeah, that he gets, he gets caught up at work and he misses it. And he comes home late and the, and the son is sitting there with this sad face. You miss me at the Christmas play. You don't care anything about me. The same thing happens to yourself when you say that you're going to go do something and you don't do it. Now, granted, you may not be sitting there like that little boy pouting, but you're but you have basically caused yourself to not trust yourself. Stop it. Today, starting today, I want you when you say that you're going to do something, do it. Even when somebody asks you, hey, you coming to my Christmas party and then you say, yeah, I'm going to be there. And you know, good and well, you're not going to go. Why are you saying that? That you're going to go. Tell the truth. No, I'm not going to be able to make it. Or at least say, you know what? If you if there's a, a gray area, you might be able to make it. You might not. You can say, hey, I might be able to make it. I don't know. Simple. You're doing that person a favor and you're doing yourself a favor because you are not lying to yourself. Understand the power of your own tongue and then you will get out of a hole that you have dug for yourself. Almost instantly. So. No more. I'll do it tomorrow. If you're going to do it, if you say you're going to do it, do it now. Start right now. And and if you're trying to conquer a dream, um, achieve a goal. Find out what it is that you need to do right now that will propel you further along than anything else that you can do for that moment to conquer your dream. This is your host, C.B. Baker with Conquer Dreams. Till next time.